If you're a gamer like me, you probably like the convenience of a dice tray for your tabletop gaming, especially if it looks good and even better if it doesn't stress the wallet, right? Well, my penny pinching friends, you are in luck because today I'm going to show you a cheap, easy way to make a dice tray from cheap dollar store foam board and some things you have around the house. And if you like the way this one looks, too bad, it's not for you. This is for my longtime subscriber who always lifts me up, always has positive things to say about my videos. Spide9, this one's for you. Wow. And also, I'm going to throw in a few packs of dice to go along with it just for saying thanks for being a beacon of positivity in what can sometimes be a very negative world. You, my friend, are a keeper. And before we charge into this project, like a kid tearing into presents on Christmas Day, let's take a quick second for some station identification. Welcome to the Real Killer DM channel, a channel dedicated to the pursuit of fun through tabletop gaming. A couple of years ago, I bought a pack of canvas frames. I got them from the Hobby Lobby, and I'm not sure if you can tell, but they were beat up pretty bad. There was also some massive tears on the canvases themselves. That being said, I, I got them at a huge discount, and I already had a project in mind that the tears wouldn't really matter. I flipped the frame upside down, and I added a layer of dollar store foam board wrapped in this material which I had also bought at the dollar store. I think it was supposed to be a table runner or something, but anyway, I wrapped the bottom piece and glued it down, and then I added a few more divider pieces also wrapped. Um, those would help to separate the dice in the tray. And presto, I had created my first dice tray. I embellished it with my wife's and my name, as well as our family name, on little name plates that went around the sides. I also added a crystal from a necklace that my wife had found a long time ago, along with a few 3D printed mystical symbols, and presto, the whole thing looks good and it's ready to go. So for this build, I'm doing basically the exact same thing, except that I'm going to imprint the pattern onto the foam board instead of wrapping it. And also, I'm only making one side compartment for the dice instead of the six that I did on my original one. I started this build with a really cool dog print that I got from my mother-in-law. And the really, really cool thing about this dice tray is that when it's not being used, it can simply be hung up as an inconspicuous piece of art decor. I started this build by measuring the inside dimensions of the picture frame first, and then I cut out my bottom piece of foam board. I like to use a metal straight edge when making my cuts, as they tend to come out sharper and cleaner than using the wood yardstick and way, way better than freehand. Speaking of free, did you know that you can show your support for my channel and the work that I do by freely smashing that like button? And if you do like my content and you would like to see more, smash the subscribe button too. We would love to have you as a new member to the Killer Family. I like to use my square to make the cuts a perfect 90 degree angle. That way I don't get those wonky, disjointed, weird looking corners. And then, once I finished cutting and test fitting the bottom piece, I went ahead and moved on to cutting my interior and the top pieces. Also, be aware that the interior wall dimensions are different than the top border dimensions. So, measure for both and make your cuts accordingly. Once the cuts were done, I needed to strip all of the outer paper from both sides of the pieces. And FYI, those paper pieces from the bottom foam board are perfect for making scrolls for D&D or Pathfinder. And that's exactly what I did with one of those sheets. The other is going to become a cool wanted poster for the player's adventure. So I printed a cool new ruler on my Elgu Mars 2 the other day. I just wanted to add a new design to my ever-growing collection of rollers, stamps, and texture tools, like the aluminum ball and roller. Um, and if you don't have access to a 3D printer like I have, these homemade aluminum rollers do a great job of adding character to your builds, and truthfully, it's what I used for years before I got my 3D printers. But this time, I printed a Warhammer Chaos Marine symbol, and this is the symbol that I have decided to imprint on the dice tray rolling surface. I made sure to line it up a few inches off center. To account for the dice holding section, I wanted the display in the rolling area of the tray only, and I didn't want it to look janky, kind of like this man's haircut. After I carefully imprinted the chaos symbol on the foam board, I went around it with a cobblestone texture roller, just making sure to skirt along the edges of the chaos symbol. So if you're doing this project, make sure to press the roller hard into the foam board 
Otherwise, the imprint won't last and the foam board tends to revert back to its original state and you're going to lose the image or texturing that you had wanted in the first place. After finishing the bottom foam piece, it was time to work on the sides, top, and dividing wall for the dice tray. I did them in the exact same way as the bottom. I stripped the paper off both sides of the foam strips and then I rolled the cobblestone pattern into all of the strips. I only imprinted one side of the strips as the other side would never be seen. The last piece that I needed to prep was the divider for the tray. So I textured one side of both of the strips and then I glued the strips together to make it a little bit sturdier for the retaining wall. With the prep all done, it was time to start gluing the pieces to the back of the canvas. I laid out a good amount of glue with my hot glue gun and then I firmly pressed the back of the bottom piece into the canvas. Next, I added glue to the sides of the canvas frame so that I could attach the interior wall pieces. Now don't worry if you have a small gap left at the top since the border we attached to the top of the frame will cover it up anyway. I have to say, this is one of the easiest and fun crafts and anyone can do it. From adults to children, this is an all ages, all skill level introduction to the crafting hobby. For parents of smaller children, you can substitute regular Elmer's glue for the hot glue. It'll be much safer for the kids, um, but remember it will add a longer drying time before you can prime and paint the tray. When gluing the top pieces on, don't worry if there's a small amount that hangs over the edge of the tray as we're going to be trimming off the excess once all the pieces are glued on. And just make sure that the insides are lined up correctly, you will have no issues. After that, there's only one thing left to do for the construction and that is to attach the divider wall and separate the dice holding side from the dice rolling side. And for this, I simply add my glue to the divider and I place it in the tray on the edge of the Chaos Marine symbol so it doesn't cover it up. Now that the construction is finished, it's time for the Black Magic Craft Mod Podge base coat. Thank you very much, Jeremy. I like to add a heavy coat of Mod Podge just so I can make sure it gets into all the cracks and crevices. And while that's happening, now is a good time to remind everyone that I will be rewarding one of my subscribers with a different dice tray that I've made since this one is spoken for already. The only thing that you need to do to be eligible for this prize is to be a subscriber and comment on this video. I will pick a comment at random and that person will win their own custom built dice tray. So if you like freebies, this is your chance to get an easy peasy reward for very minimal effort. Unfortunately, my camera turned off and I didn't get any shots of the painting. But simply put, I painted a few uh, random bricks army green and a few in tan. After that, I hit it with a liberal coat of black wash, and this is what the final product looks like. I hope you've enjoyed my video, and I hope it inspires you to create a thing also. That's all I have for you right now, but I will see you in the next video.